Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent HG Show, where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today, we're going into Monsters. Monsters did not really get too many upgrades um, in the latest patch of so new cards. They got two, of course, as every single faction got. Um, one of them is Giant Toad, which is the card that I'm not going to use today. The other one is what I am going to use. Uh, we're going to use this specific artifact card in combination with Vampires, who are still very, very good, especially in today's meta. And the card that I am talking about is, of course, the Necromancer's Tome right over here, because we're going to be using this in combinations with Vampires in what I like to call the Tome of Blood deck, because, uh, yeah, we're going to be spreading out a lot of bleeding with this Vampire deck, but Necromancer's Tome is a very crucial part of this deck. You can use that if you put that on the board. That does not do anything initially, as with a lot of the artifacts that have been added with this expansion. But from that point onwards, whenever you play a bronze unit, you summon a random copy of it from your graveyard to the same row and give it doomed. Basically doubling up on your bronze vampires. And we've added basically every single one of those in uh, twofold, of course, along with the NL Conqueror as well, because uh, this is a devotion deck. And that all combines in a very, very hefty deck that you can definitely use to rank up, because I used this so far to get to rank 1. And I'll probably use it to get to pro even further. So uh, yeah, we're going to go through each and every single card in this deck list one by one. If you want to check that out on your own, you can do so using the link in the description that leads you to the Play Gwent website. With this deck list, you can export it there. And also, if you do, don't forget to upvote it there as well, because every bit of feedback is really, bit really appreciated, as is your support, as always. So, as I said, we're going to be going through each and every single card one by one. If you're not interested in that, you can skip to the example matches using the timeline down below. Still here? Okay, let's go. First up, we have the Bruxa. 3 power for 4 provisions, has Thrive. And on deploy, you give an enemy, bleeding, uh, enemy unit bleeding for 2 turns. So bleeding, as usual, I think most of you know what bleeding is, but bleeding is a status effect that takes its counter down at the end of your opponent's, well, the affected unit's turn, and damages that unit by one ignoring armor. It also um, removes vitality with the same amount of turns in case that unit has vitality. So that's basically the short description of what bleeding actually does. Um, the Bruxa also has Thrive, so that means that every single time you play a unit that has a higher pace power than the Bruxa, you actually gain another point on the Bruxa as well, so a bit of passive point gaining. And now we have immediately our first engine card, the Garcane, 4 power for 4 provisions, and at the end of every ally turn, if there is a bleeding enemy, you boost this card by 1 automatically. Um, just simple 1 point engine. Um, comparable to the Ibadanian Knights from last week. Then NL Conquer, this is a Devotion deck, so this card will not destroy itself. 744 on deploy, we don't destroy it ourselves, um, and we have Veil. So simple 7 point card, but of course, with the Tome of the Necromancer's Tome, we gain 14 points from that if you already have one in the graveyard. So very, very powerful in this deck. Now we have a single Feast of Blood, an organic card where you purify and damage an enemy unit by 3. Um, making it capable of getting rid of defenders really easily. And if you control a vampire, you also give that card bleeding for three turns. So six points and a purify. Easy addition to this deck, I think. Then double Necarot. Necarot is our next engine card. Four power for five provisions. Has zeal on its order ability. If you put him on the melee row, you can give an enemy unit bleeding for two turns. Normally, this refreshes every two turns, but whenever you play a Vampire card, which will almost be the always be the case, you reduce this unit's cooldown by one. There are two in the deck, so you could also have two if you play the Necromancer Stone, giving you four turns of bleeding every turn, which is very, very powerful. Then a double Alp. Alps are also very powerful, basically giving you 10 points for a single card for five provisions. So starts at four power, on deploy you give an enemy unit bleeding, also already giving you seven points basically. And on order, so the next turn you can do that again. So six turns of bleeding and a four point body, this card is still very, very powerful. 
Then a single Incubus, just in case we can't resurrect any of our cards, we can also use the Incubus to just resurrect um, something anyway. Uh, you summon a bronze unit from your opponent's graveyard to the opposite row, and then summon a, unit, a bronze unit of equal or less provisions from your graveyard to this row. So you could basically grab like something very low. Most uh, um, factions have a low power bronze card that does have a very powerful deployability, um, but the low power should give you an option here to get um, some points benefit out of it. And the Incubus itself also starts at six power. So uh, definitely giving you that eight for five and maybe another engine on your side of the board, depending on how you play this. Then of course, the most powerful card in this deck, and I say this, um, yeah, very convincingly, because this bronze card is still as broken as it has always been. Um, since the new ability, of course, the Fleeder, four power, four, six provisions. Of course, we have two of them in the deck as well. And whenever bleeding is applied to an enemy unit, you boost self by the amount applied. The first time every turn, because at the beginning it has a counter of one, and at the beginning of your turn, the counter refreshes. So the first time you apply bleeding in your turn of your or your opponent's turn, this uh unit will boost itself by that same amount of bleeding, which can be pretty high depending on the cards that we play. Next up we have Gale, a 4 power 6 provision card that has a deploy ability on the melee row where you damage an enemy unit by 1 or by 3 if it's bleeding, uh, and if you kill something with this deploy ability you boost Gale by the base power of the destroyed unit. So if you kill something of 6 base power with this ability he will boost himself by 6 as well potentially giving you yeah upwards to 10 or higher points depending on your opponents this will not happen against dwarves of course but most other uh, decks will give you a juicy enough card to get his points going and we have the queen of the night another purify option if you want but she has a six power body for six provisions which is already pretty good and on deploy if you put on the melee row instead of the ranged row you give bleeding for three turns to an enemy instead of just purifying it but another good tech card that we will definitely be able to use. And then the Armored Arakas. This is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm biased about this card, of course, because this is the card that way back when it was introduced, I got to reveal. But the Armored Arakas, six power, two armor for eight provisions, provisions, and on deploy, you apply bleeding to an enemy unit equal to its base power. So that means that if you put this on something like Savolos Frightener, which has 12 base power, you add 12 points of bleeding on that card. If you also had a Fleeter or two on the board, those cards will go up by 12 points. So very, very powerful combo piece if you play this correctly. But uh, yeah, Armored Arakas is still badass. And now we have the Necromancer Stoma. I think I explained this card already, but we can double up on every bronze card that we play in the second or third round, depending on when you want to use this. Because this use, this card basically allows you to push really hard in round two as well, if you won round one. So uh, don't underestimate the power of this creepy book. And then the Proto Fleeder. The Proto Fleeder has the same benefit as the Fleeder, but the other way around. So on for 9 provisions with 4 power, you get a deployability that gives an enemy unit bleeding and then boosts yourself, so Proto Fleeder in this case, by the amount of bleeding on that unit after you've applied that bleeding. So base, if you just apply bleeding to a unit, this is 10 points. If you put this on the unit that just got 12 turns of bleeding because of um, the, um, the Argos that we just saw, the Armored Argos, this goes a lot higher, of course, because, for example, if you take the same example, the bleeding has gone down to 11, we add 3 turns of bleeding, that is 14 turns of bleeding, so Proto Fleeter will boost itself by 14, so going up to 18 points. So definitely a possible swing card if it can be used correctly. Now we have Oriana, of course, in a vampire deck. She cannot be omitted. Also four power for nine provisions. And on deploy, you give an enemy unit bleeding with a duration equal to the number of vampires on your side of the board, which can be significant, of course. Uh, she is not included, but everything else is. And on the ranged row, um, if you put her on the ranged row and at the end of your turn, she will boost herself by the number of bleeding enemy units. So if there are three enemy units bleeding, when your turn ends, she will gain three points. Very powerful engine card with her own deploy ability, so always very useful. And of course, she's also a vampire. Next up, we have the single tutor in this deck, the Nagel Far. So look at two random gold cards from your deck, then play one and place the other on top. 
always very important to remember that second part of the ability uh, where you are guaranteed your next gold card um, on top of your deck, which could come in handy if you play Nagelfar a bit early. Then, of course, Detlof van der Erten himself. So six power for ten provisions. And on deploy, you spawn Blood Moon on an enemy row for two turns. And you increase that duration by one for every adjacent vampire. So that could be four turns of Blood Moon. He also has an order ability every turn where you can damage an enemy unit with bleeding by one. So, and if you kill something with that one damage, you spawn an Ekimara on this row. Sounds hard to do, but if you can manage to hit a two power unit with bleeding at the end of your turn, then that unit will go to one and still have a little bit of bleeding. And you can use that love to finish that card off in the next turn, giving you three uh, a tree power vampire in turn which could in turn again function as a nice bit of extra vampires for oriana so definitely a powerful card and is often underestimated because the blood moon on its own is already eight turns uh, eight points so on deploy if this works out completely this is already 14 points for 10 uh, but the order ability can make it even better then of course Crimson Curse itself cannot be omitted as well, so we spawn Blood Moon for 5 turns on an enemy row and then spawn 2 Akimaras, giving us um, 6 points in bodies, in 2 bodies, which also of course function as vampires, and then 10 more points in the row effect. Also of course synergizing really well with the bleeding archetype, the vampire archetype that we're using. And then the most powerful card I think in this deck, the Unseen Elder 6 power for 12 provisions on deploy, you give bleeding for 4 turns to an enemy unit, and at the end of your turn you give bleeding 2 turns to a random enemy unit without bleeding. If you have Devotion, which we have, bleeding on all enemy units is also triggered at your and at the end of your turn. So if there are five units uh, bleeding when your turn ends, Unseen Elder will reduce the counter of every one of those bleeding units by one at the end of your turn. And of course, at the end of your opponent's turn, they will go down again because that's how bleeding works. Um, very powerful engine card and can demolish a board if played correctly. And then last but not definitely not least, we have Regis uh, Reborn. Starts at one power for 13 provisions and on deploy you drain an enemy unit by three, which is already seven points, not much for 13 provisions of course, but at the end of your turn, while in hand or deck, if there is an enemy unit with bleeding, you increase the base power of this card by one. Meaning that this card could potentially go to 16, 17, uh, I think the maximum is 19, depending on how your opponent plays their cards, of course. Um, and then, of course, on top of that is another 6 points, so that could be 25 points. Just basically giving you an option for a very short final round, because this card is a powerhouse. Then we have the Crystal Skull as our stratagem to boost an allied unit by 4 and give it a Veil, just to protect one of our vampire engines at the start. And then our leader ability, of course, is Blood Send, giving an enemy unit bleeding for three turns on order. We can do that three times in total during the match. And once all charges are used up, you also spawn an Akimaya into a random allied row, a tree power vampire. So that adds to our swarm, um, giving us a lot of bleeding synergy. And uh, yeah, just overall a very good leader ability for this deck. And that's about it. So let's head straight into the example matches and see how powerful this deck really is. Next up is Assimilate. Nilfgaard Assimilate. These days can be a lot of different things. So I have no idea what's gonna be coming here. Uh, it's usually a sign that I need to play Unseen Elder very late um, to avoid getting it copied too much. You can get Incubus out of the way. Double bronze is also should go, and that's a pretty good start, I should say. Jan Calvate immediately. So they definitely want to get that consistency. I'm just going to start slow with Nekirat on the Lamp Chin and see where it goes from there. We can then play the Garcane and then, uh, or not. I mean, the Garcane is still an option, still an engine card. It's going to go up one point. So we're fine. So I want to play my bronzes in the first round so we can double up on them in the uh, next round with Necromancer Stone. Even though we don't have it yet in hand, so we're going to have to be careful about that. But Alp next. We continue the bleeding. And Tourney Joust again on the Alp. They really don't want to see those units going around. I mean, I still have a vampire on the board. 
I should probably just play the Anal Conqueror first, so that's another 7 points. And we get 2 points per turn still, so... All is well, all is good, all is fine. Checking if I can actually play one of the golds here. Although it would be annoying if I have to choose between Necromancer Stone and Reaches. So that's always an option. Uh, and we get Nekorot on the board there. I could just do Gale on Nekorot. That's probably enough. We still have one turn of bleeding there, so I'm just gonna eat Nekorot with Gale. Even though we would have had a very big Gale on uh, Jan Calvate, but I think it wasn't exactly perfect there. And we get Bratens now, which is an interesting play here. Because that's really early for Bratens. But I could basically do the same thing. If I now do Unseen Elder early, um, I'm forcing them into playing something big on their ends. So, Unseen Elder. Four turns of bleeding over there, and then three turns of bleeding on Bratens. And we'll see how this works out further, because this is going to add some more bleeding. And hopefully pushing us in the good in the right direction here. Um, sadly we get a spying tag so there was still one over there. I'm gonna do Feast of Blood on the Mage Torture because we can get rid of the Veil there and that's just more bleeding. And that's four more units that are now bled. And we get Arto immediately now so they lose the benefit of playing Unseen Elder on their end. That was really, really aggressive. Um, I guess I can leave the round up to you then. Oh, wait a second, no. They don't have Devotion. So I still have the benefit when playing... Um... Oh, I could also play Oriana here. I am going to. I'm going to play Oriana. That's going to give me three turns of bleeding on... Um... Unseen Elder, I should say. And that is still going to be enough. We get three extra bleeding over here. I should have put it to the right of Unseen Elder. That's also important. And I'm going to risk it with Nagelfar next turn. And we get a Purify on the Unseen Elder. And is that enough? I'm going to get two more points. Uh, guess we'll see with Nagelfar. I'm going to risk it. We get Detloff. So that's Blood Moon. Or Proto Freely. I don't think I have any bleeding left, so I think I'll just do that laugh in the back row here. There, is no other way. there we go. And there we get some more bleeding. I think that's gonna be fine. And they get the Duchess Informant on the Guard Cane, triggering Assimilate twice. But I don't think that's gonna be enough. So I lose three points, but I gain one here. I gain I gain that point of bleeding as well, and then another one. It's gonna be a point shy if I don't play my final card. But I don't want to play my... Wait, it's one, two... Oh wait, I get another one from Garkin. It's gonna be equal. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, calculated that correctly. Well, I missed Garkane, so the Garkane was another point. Whew. Calculating that out, we get Proto Fleeter, the Normal Fleeter, and Garkane. Get Garkane, and then I can't risk it. If I get Necromancer's Tome now, I'm fucked. Okay, I, I risked it anyway. Yeah, Nekirot first. I think I'm good to go. So Rune Mage might kill my Nekirot. Might not. Or lock my Nekarot, yeah. The Dustbook Runestone. Pretty high chances that there's a lock in there. We get bleeding! We get bleeding on our uh, on our Nekarot. And then, of course, double cross now. And that's gonna be the proto -fleeter. Obviously. Uh, but we can also stack some nice bleeding here. I'm gonna put two on the proto and then put the uh, our own Fleeter over here. And put three more on the Rune Mage in the back. We don't need to stack just yet. And I can stack with Armored Arakas on what is probably going to be the Proto... Oh, they all have four points. So that doesn't really matter. 
Illusionist in the back on a Garcane. Do I stack bleeding or not? There's only one more turn of bleeding going down on our opponent's side. Um, so if I just stack all the... Oh wait, I need to wait. Um, I'm gonna add Armored Arakas to um, the Proto Fleeter. So that's four points on the Fleeter here. And then we can just add another... Is it more points? I'm gonna gain one point from this, but two from this. So it's better to put it on the same unit. Yeah. So it's better to put all the bleeding on the same unit. We get a lock on... Ooh, that's still 12 points in difference. And another six over there. But... I'm gonna put three over there. We get another Akimara, and then this... Is just enough. Oh boy, that was really close. Yeah, uh, didn't really matter if I added the uh, the Necrods, uh bleeding as well because it was going to take any more. That was really close. And we face against elves next. Elves is a doable matchup. There's a lot of targets that you can bleed, um, and if you can win round one, then we're also good to go to push in round two. So, as always, we're going to try to filter out our bronzes a little bit. Well, try to keep one of each. We get the NL Conqueror, which is also good. And then I'm, I'm going to kick Armored Arakas if we get the Flea there. So basically a perfect hand right now. If we get the Necromancer Stone next, that is also very crucial. We didn't get a Garcane, um, but it's better than nothing, I think. So, first up, Fleeter very aggressively. We want to win this first round, so we're going to fail the Fleeter and try to, yeah, build that up as quickly as possible. And we get, of course, the classic starting play for Elves. Fame death immediately. Um, I am going to put Nekarot down first, uh, which gives us a two-turn bleed. Getting a little bit of points on the Fleeter. And of course, Regis is getting going as well now. And now we got the Elven Swordmaster, which will help them significantly in trying to kill off um, our vampires here. I'm gonna put some bleeding on that Swordmaster because I'm gonna kill it in the next turn. We get some more bleeding with Nekarov as well. And there we start to see that it's in our favor that there are so many targets. I'm gonna set, let me not say hi, so hi there, hi there. Are you in the mood or not? I don't think. Are you in the mood? Oh, kind of. Big, big sneeze. Are you having a cold, my dear? Mm hmm? Oh, yeah, I think he's in the mood. Which is in the mood. So there we go. One hit on Nekarot. And then, of course, a waylay to uh, top that off to kill Nekarot outright. Hey, oh, you're a nice kitty. Or just like that, and then of course now the waylay. Oh, Nekarot, sadly. Um, next up we'll be playing the Alp. Um, Alp is always good on that Vernal Seals Commando. And we're still in the lead, kinda. Kinda, a little bit. If I can get the Blood Moon going on the, the front row, that would also be nice. Um, we get a Dime Iridium Bomb, but no Madoc. Interesting. So there's no extra bit of bleeding for me now. So I am gonna put that laugh on the board with... Yeah, it's the, the best thing I can do, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna put that laugh on the board. Uh, hitting the front row here. And then I can blood send uh, Aleron to guarantee another 3 points on my Fleeter, and that's going to be enough tempo to get us going further. And we get a pass there. Okay. I am going to play, although I want to push. I want to push against Elves. We always push against Elves. So let's pass and then push against Elves. We can push pretty heavily. There's a lot of gold cards in our hand. Um, so we can play Oriana and then slowly also build up our bronze pool, um, which is starting to become pretty hefty. Darkane is always good support, um, but I'm going to kick him anyway, because uh, the NL Conqueror is going to be better. And we get Incubus. Incubus does not give Doomed, by the way. So are there five provision bronzes in our opponent's deck? Is Elven Swordman? No, they're all four. 
Okay. I'll see if that comes into play or not. Um, but we'll start with an NL Conqueror. Seven points, dry on the board. And then we get a Waylay on the NL Conqueror immediately. Okay. Fair enough. So there's no way for us to actually get... Because Nekarot is five. So the only thing that I could resurrect is Broxa. But at that point, what's the point? Um, so Incubus is kind of useless at the moment. There's not really that many good cards in our hand that we can use immediately. Um, and again, no five provision bronzes in our opponent's graveyard. So we can't actually do anything there. I mean, I could put bleeding on it and then hit it with Gale. But that's the bare minimum, isn't it? I'm gonna have to pass anyway. Not the best solution there, but yeah, there wasn't really another option. I can get rid of Incubus then next turn. Um, and hopefully get the Necromancer Stone and some Bronzes, because this is a really gold-filled hand, which is usually a good sign. But I need the target, so I need Lost Say as well. So as much bleeding as I can apply. Crimson Curse, the Broxa, and the Queen of the Night. There is no 5 provision card in our opponent's graveyard yet anyway. I didn't play a Garcane. And we get Necarods, okay. Better than nothing, I suppose. Um, we do have a lot of options here. If I can bait out an early waylay, that would probably be the best choice. Didn't get, there we go, Vanadine. We didn't get our second Fleet Rider. Look at that. That's basically the play I wanted. That's in my hand right uh, in my deck right now. So, Crimson Curse in the back. That is that are some nice um targets for Waylay though. So it would have been damaged already. That wasn't really smart of me, but he's still the only one on the board there. So he is gonna get damaged next turn. And be at three, so. Just gonna play Nekarot on Alyssa Hansen there. Um, and Vanadeen is gonna get. Yeah, Vanadeen is gonna get hit. So Vanadeen is gone, unless he gets boosted. Uh, but he does not get boosted. Okay, that's good. That's good. Because Vanadeen is actually a juicy target for, um, for Gale here. Um, so I'm putting some bleeding on Vanadeen. Um, and then adding Gale. That's, well, that's a 10 point Gale. Uh, my mouse is shitting out again. Does that occasionally. And then I need to whack it. There we go. Getting rid of a couple of owls, we get another Dimeridium Bomb. Fair enough, I suppose. Uh, let's play Broxa first, because we don't really need to do anything else. The Dead Eyes are going to die in a minute. There we go. We got three vampires on the board and a couple of um, waylays incoming. So there's still one waylay in their hands and then there's three in their deck right now. So Simlos is three waylays. Oh, but Snowdrop can make that. Okay, that's a change for Snowdrop. Okay, I'm thinking what the next play should be. I think Oriana first. Because I can put three turns of bleeding on Snowdrop. And then I'll get... Yeah, I'll get some points on her as well. But she will be in range for two waylays. But that's the point. I want to bait out those waylays. If you get some lost now, that is fine. So it's going to be five waylays now because of Snowdrop. But it's better... Is that four? One. Two. Three. Yeah, only four. Interesting. Okay, now I can do Unseen Elder. Uh, yeah, fine. Unseen Elder on one of the Dead Eyes, doesn't really matter. Um, and I don't have any reason not to put Bleeding on another Dead Eye as well. So that is fine. And I need to lock, but I have a Purify. I have a Purify, so that is fine. I can Purify Unseen Elder now. And that also picks up the Tribe even better, and that removes a bunch of Dead Eyes. And then we get the Elven Swordmaster. 
Um, five turns of bleeding on Kiaren. And that kills another dead eye. And then I can add three more turns of bleeding on Kiaren and gain much more from that because that's going to be seven points on the Proto Fleeter. And then I think we got this. I think we got this. Yeah, so Proto Fleeter now uh, on Kiaren just because it gives me six points instead of three. And our opponent only has one more turn of bleeding unless. Um, the Unseen Elder dies, which he probably will with this Frenossia, I'm assuming. If that's Frenossia, they waited too long, but it's probably Isengrim. It's Isengrim, yeah. Frenossia, they would have played earlier. Uh, so there we go. That goal is the Armaggio. Drain. There we go. Another 20 point Regis, and we're 20 points ahead. There we go. Yeah, Elves is a really good matchup with this deck. And there we go, I think that showcased pretty well how powerful this deck can be. The vampires are in full force in this uh, meta and I think uh, they're here, going to be here to say. Uh, I didn't really get to properly show off the Necromancer Stone, but potentially you could get double up on six bronzes here. Uh, your hand would need to be perfect for that, of course, but uh, you should get at least two or three in most matches whenever you get Necromancer Stone. But I got really lucky with my draws there and our opponent got a really... Uh, many banishing cards so that was really annoying as well but still uh, as you can see even without that you can definitely win matches with this deck so the tome of blood deck and that's going to be it for today hope you enjoyed this episode let me know what you think of the tome of blood deck how we can improve it because that's what we're here for after all we're trying to help each other out trying to navigate this very complicated patch in gwent these days so uh with that said hope you all enjoyed it Next time we're going to be taking a look, I'm thinking Nilfgaard with the create mechanic. I want to just show off how broken all of that is now with uh, Rune Mage and stuff like that. So keep an eye out for the next video. Uh, don't forget to check out the link to the Playground website and upvote the deck there as well. Because as always, all support is really appreciated. And uh, with that said, I'm going to leave it at that. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video or stream. Goodbye and stay nutty.